Alright, welcome back to Digital Electronics. We're cruising right along here. We are going to go over seven segment displays today. Uh, very important that you understand how to uh, wire these up. You're going to be using them on your date of birth project uh, and you're going to learn how to illuminate them and when to control what segments come on, what segments don't come on, and how to do that. Alright, so we're going to cover, uh, you know, kind of how a seven segment display works and what a common anode and common cathode is and how to select a resistor value for a certain luminosity as we go through this, okay? So, this is a seven segment display, all right? Because you have segment A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and you have a decimal point. Uh, we're not gonna use the decimal point, all right, for anything, but uh, you can control it as well. It is important that you understand and have the data sheets for these as well, because you have to know how to hook them up. All right, so this is what a seven segment display is. A lot of, you know, your digital clocks and everything uh, use these. They might use a hex display, uh, you know, so that you can get the cross. And because we're limited, I guess, uh, with a seven segment display of all the different letters that we can produce, but we're gonna show you some. We can do all the digits. So very common with just doing stuff that involves numbers. Okay, so it, we are going to control each specific segment. So we are going to control when A comes on and when A is off, when B is on and B is off, and so on and so forth. There's two common ways to create these, and I have them all mixed together. So when you guys actually do your seven segment display, uh, you're going to have to know if it's a common anode or common cathode. Uh, you, you can look at the number on the side. I may or may not tell you what the number is. Uh, to know if it's a common anode or a common cathode. I might have you look that up. Okay, now look at the difference. The wiring piece is the same except for one part. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, those are all to the same pin numbers on the seven segment display. Okay, that's not any different. What's different is if we have a common cathode, that means that we need to connect ground to the common cathode middle pin which means all of our circuits that turn it on will be highs. So with a common cathode, okay, one is on, zero is off. With a common anode, okay, that's the one on the right hand side here, we hook the middle pin up to power. VCC, it's gonna get five volts. So with common anode, this is where zeros turn it on and ones turn it off. So why does it do that? Well, because zeros help complete the path. If the lights are already wired to power, they need to complete to ground. So that's why zeros turn common anodes on and ones turn them off, because one would mean we're sending power to power, we're not completing a path. But when we're sending ground to power on the common anode, we're giving it a path. Just like on the common cathode, why ones turn it on? Because ones complete the path to ground. Okay, zeros turn it off with common cathode because zero to zero gives us nothing. The lights will not illuminate. You're going to notice when I do the date of birth example, I'm going to uh, calculate everything with a common anode. The majority of the seven segment displays I do have, though, are common anode, meaning zeros turn the common anode on, ones turn the common anode off. And when I say on and off, I'm talking about each individual segment that we're going to program. And it'll make sense, guys, once we go through this and once you guys breadboard these up. Uh, you are going to breadboard a few just to see how they work, and we're going to hard code them. You'll do them in multi-sim, and we'll breadboard them up. All right, so for the seven-segment display, the SSD, that's the seven-segment display, okay, we can produce all the digits. So zero through nine is what we can display. And when we, when we do them, this is how I would like them to show. So the one is all the way on the two right hand side. It's the B and C segment. Okay, not the E and F segment. So it does, it does kind of matter how we write this out. Okay, so we can do the digits zero through nine. These are the alpha characters that we can use for the seven segment display. So we can do, and you can probably do a lowercase c as well uh, if you want to. All right, but this is what they're gonna look like and when we actually you know, define some different letters. So make sure that you know this because uh, this is going to be important for some of your homework problems where you actually write out specific letters and things like that or come up with some possible, um, you know, different four-letter words that we can come up with using seven-segment displays and things like that. Okay, so 
we can write a simple message here and if you can pick up what that's saying it's saying cold soda so you know when you walk over to like the soda machine and you order something and it just says you know what the price of the soda is 75 cents or a dollar that's all it is is we're using a seven segment display and we can flash the signal on and off as well all right let's understand the basic operations of an led right a light emitting diode okay leds even though it's new in your tvs and things like that right new led technology leds have been around for decades all right it's just a light emitting diode and if you remember from our component piece right a diode is something that just controls the direction of current that's why you know it's been very important as we've breadboarded and made our other circuits you know the direction that you have the led turned does make a difference okay because it limits current flow and when we're looking at it we have a anode and a cathode end of your led the anode end is the long leg of your led the cathode end is your short end of your LED or your more negative side and your anode is considered more positive side. So when we turn on an LED, an LED the anode side has to be higher than the cathode side and we allow current to flow all right, and that's what illuminates the LED. If you put it backwards the anode side will not be higher than the cathode side and current will not flow. Okay, And we can also the amount of current flowing through it is what determines the brightness of the LED, which we control with the resistor. And that's why I ask you guys to use drop resistors also because it protects the LED. The LED will uh, blow up. I have had an LED completely you know, split in half and, and recently actually in one of my night glasses uh, it, it kind of blew up. So good stuff there. Um, that's why we wear safety glasses and things like that. And it didn't use a lot of current. He just forgot to put a resistor on it and the thing kind of exploded. Pretty cool though. All right, but safety first, I don't want you guys doing any of that, so I wanna make sure that we have uh, the resistor there to protect it. Okay, so let's look about how it works. Okay, we have a five volt system here. And notice if we have a common anode or a common cathode and, and that sort of thing. So what we're showing here is the common anode. Notice both pins are represented, you know, the center wire pin. When we flip the switch to zero, the LED will turn on. Okay, so on top here, we have common uh, anode. So right now, five volts to five volts, there's no complete path, nothing's gonna turn on. All right, so when we look at the common anode, this is how it's wired, okay? And then we go to each segment. And if you notice how the LEDs are positioned on each segment, the side with the little line, that's the cathode side, the negative side. All right, and everything else goes to voltage on these guys. Notice how the VCC connects to the back of the triangle piece on the symbol on all of these. All right, then you're going to be hooking up the signals to the different segments to switch them on and off, okay? So let's take a look. This is common anode here. How do I know just by looking at it? Well, if I look, it says CA in the upper left-hand corner, and it's connected to five volts. So all of these are connected to five volts. Now, the only ones that are gonna turn on, all right, the ones that are connected to five volts aren't gonna turn on. The ones that are connected to ground are going to turn on, if that makes sense, right? Remember, with a common anode, zeros turn it on, and we're gonna deem ground as zero, all right, because it completes the path to voltage. So since the entire seven segment display has five volts going to it, any segment that's connected to ground completes a path and turns on. Any of the other segments that are connected to five volts do not turn on. So you should be able to look at this and look at what segments turn on. Any segment that's connected to ground, so trace the path, which ones are connected to ground. B is connected to ground, C is connected to ground, okay, F is connected to ground, and G is connected to ground. So before you know, pause, I want you to think about what number is actually going to be displayed here, all right? Segment B is connected to ground, segment C is connected to ground. So we know B and C are going to be on, and so are F and G. So what I want you to understand is which segments those are. This will display a 4. Okay, so segments B, C, F, and G are all connected to ground. They will turn on. A, E, and D are connected to 5 volts. They will be off. This is for common anode. Remember, common anode, 
zero turns all the segments that are connected to zero on. Okay, it's the exact opposite for common cathode. All right, but this is common anode. So you'll have some different homework problems on that. All right, let's take a look at common cathode now. If we switch this on, common cathode. So now we have to have, we still have to complete the path, but they're gonna be wired to ground now. So with common cathode, all right, the center pin on the seven segment display is wired to ground. So now five volts will turn the LED on versus connecting it to ground will keep the LED off, all right? So it's the exact opposite of the common anode. I don't have as many common cathodes and it's gonna be up to you when you do your date of birth design whether you choose to do common anode or common cathode. I don't care which one, you just gotta make sure that you find the common cathode um, uh, seven segment display out of the box. Uh, one note I want to make on these, when you guys breadboard these up, they have to split the center of the breadboard piece just like your uh, IC chips do. All right, So they have to lay across that center gap so that you're not shorting them out. So part of your common cathode or common cathode or your common cathode has to lie in you know uh, columns A, B, C, D right on one side and then on the other side they can go into the FGH side of your breadboard. So you do have to use that, that middle center divider or you will short uh, out your seven segment display. Okay, because you'll be having the same signal go to the entire row. So just be careful when you're doing this. So when switches are flipped on this one, all right, the common cathode is opposite the athode, the anode, sorry, I don't know why I said athode, but all right, common cathode, is opposite common anode. So common anode, zeros turn it on, five volts turns it off. Common cathode, ones turn it on, which is voltage, zeros turn it off. So let's take a look at this one. And how do I know it's common cathode? If you look at the seven segment display in the upper left hand corner, it says CK. I know cathode is spelled with a C, but for the abbreviation for seven segment displays, we use uh, CK for that. So ones turn it on. So any segment here, that is connected to five volts will turn on. So if we're looking at those, segment A, segment B, segment D and E, all right, and segment G, those will all turn on. There are only two segments that are not going to turn on. Those are C and F. So maybe pause it, try to see if you can figure out which segments are gonna turn on uh, when we do this. All right, but this is how we produce the number two. All right, so F and C are off because they are connected to ground. Remember, this is common cathode, so we need voltage to turn it on. All right, so A, B, G, E, and D are all connected to five volts. And we're gonna breadboard these so that it makes sense for you guys to control different signals, all right? But you have to know if you're using a common anode or a common cathode when you're doing this. Okay, so very simple stuff, but we just have to, you know, step back. And a lot of you guys, when you do your schematics in multi-sim, make sure that you're choosing the correct seven segment display, whether you're choosing the common cathode or the common anode. Some of you guys are gonna wire your circuit up perfectly and it's not gonna work because you did it all in anode and you picked the common cathode seven segment display. So make sure that you're really paying attention to that when you CAD this up uh, in multi-sim. Okay, so how do we choose the right resistor value? Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you use a resistor value 150 ohms up to about 220, 240. All right, it's just going to change the luminosity of your LED. But you know, just based on the quantities that we have. All right, but there is a way to, to accurately calculate it uh, so that you can get a certain amount of brightness. All right, uh, for each individual LED. Okay, so a couple different ways. Uh, we're going to choose the right resistor. All right, remember the current's determining the brightness. So if the resistor's too large, your LED's gonna be dim, and some of you guys have seen that when we've breadboarded, had an LED that's just not as bright. All right, if the resistor's too small, the LED's gonna be very bright. All right, it could potentially, you know, blow the LED and things like that. So we're gonna try to choose the correct one. All right, this goes back to using Ohm's Law, which we did earlier in the semester. All right, if we take a look at a diagram here, this is a common anode diagram. And we know the voltage across any LED 
is 1.5 volts when they're on. So we know that that's what the voltage drop is, which means the rest of the voltage drop, if you guys remember Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of the voltage drops have to equal the total voltage applied. Since we're applying five volts and we know the LED drops 1.5 volts, that means there's 3.5 volts going across that resistor. So if we know the voltage drop across the resistor, all right, and we know how much current we're gonna be drawing, you know, to get a certain luminosity, we're able to actually calculate what the correct resistor value is. So there's a table that we can look at right here, okay? So if we take a look and on the, on the left, okay, it's normalized, we're just talking about the, you know, the, the intensity. Is, that's what's on the y-axis and the current is on the x-axis up here. So you know how bright do we want that LED? So if we look here, if we want, let's say for our example here, we're going to arbitrarily pick 1.5 luminosity. You know, in essence, that's kind of the middle of the road. It's not too bright and it's not too dim. It's something we can still see, you know, when the lights are on uh, and we're working in class. So if we choose a luminosity of 1.5, okay, looking at the chart, that means we need to have 15 milliamps of current. All right, so we can see on the chart there where the 1.5 and the 15 meet. All right, so we need 15 milliamps of current. So we're going to use Ohm's law, right? V equals IR, and we're solving for R. R equals V over I. We already discussed where the 3.5 comes from in the previous slide. So we're going to take 3.5 and divide it by 0 0.015. That's 15 milliamps. We're going to get approximately 233 ohms. So for what we have in class, our closest value is going to be about 220 ohms. So the majority of you guys, we're going to use 220 ohms uh, when we do all the breadboarding here. If we run out, I don't care if we drop down to 200, all right, or even the 180s, you know, up to 240, 250 is fine with me. Okay, but there's how we actually calculate the value of the resistor based on the intensity or the luminosity uh, that we want. When we talk about lights, we talk about the amount of luminance that it gives off, how much light it technically gives off. All right, so let's just do an example here because you might have one on your homework. We want to calculate the resistor value required to have a luminous intensity of 2.5 luminance, okay? So we have to look at the chart. Where does 2.5 meet up on that chart? Roughly. 25 milliamps, right? Still looking at that chart. We're still using the fact that uh, we're still wiring up the one LED, all right? So we still know the voltage drop across the resistor has to be 3.5 volts because we're applying five volts and the drop across the LED is 1.5 volts. So we're gonna take 3.5 and divide it by 0 0.025, which is 25 milliamps, and we get 140 ohms. So essentially we're gonna get about 150 ohm resistor uh, in class. So those are pretty much going to be the calculations that we're going to have to do uh, on our homework assignment. Once you guys get the homework assignment done, we are going to breadboard up a seven segment display, give it power. I'm going to have certain uh, digits and certain letters that I want you to turn on just by hard breadboarding it. All right. Putting either the, putting the resistor to either ground or power uh, and choosing the correct signal. So we'll do that in class. I'm going to go over that in class with you. Uh, once you guys, you know, watch this video and understand how the seven segment displays work, we'll go through there. Also, you're going to need the uh, the data sheet up so you know which segment goes to which pin. You know, is this pin A, B, C, D, E, F, or G? Uh, what is common, though, is the center pin on both sides of the seven segment display. Well, either if it's common anode, both sides will go to VCC. If it's common cathode, both sides will go to ground on that middle pin. Okay? But once again, we got to have the data sheet up. So, you know, as we're breadboarding and doing all these, you should have a copy of all these data sheets printed out so that you, when we're breadboarding, we can follow along and understand how to use those data sheets. You know, once, once you've breadboarded so much, you know, the data sheets, you'll pretty much have stuff memorized for the AOI stuff. Uh, but um, it's just good to have it there so when you're going through your project and breadboarding everything up, it all works out nicely. All right, guys, well, that's all I have for seven segment displays. As usual, either email me if you got a question or uh, ask me if you need me to uh, Zoom meet or team meet or else asking questions in class is always good. Um, and I think you guys will definitely get the hang of this once we breadboard it. All right, guys, have a great day. See you in class.